Do please be seated. Vice Chancellor, Chairman, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, friends and family, and especially those of you who are here to receive awards today. It is my great pleasure and privilege to welcome you here to this extraordinary building in which we are gathered. My name is John Whitcomb. I'm the Dean of Coventry Cathedral. And uh, it's lovely to be hosting this graduation ceremony. You are surrounded as you sit here in this building by an example of 20th century innovation in architecture, art, and design, a building which stands, <coughs> excuse me, as an international symbol of reconciliation, of bridging those things that divide us, reaching back into the history of the uh, old Coventry Cathedral destroyed, as I'm sure you know, by enemy bombing in 1940. But in the wake of that destruction, this cathedral and the city in which it stands reached out in the name of peace and reconciliation to the people of Germany and then ultimately across the world in our mission to make this a world in which everybody has the opportunity to thrive. We are delighted that you have chosen to come here to celebrate your achievements today and we hope that spending time in this environment will inspire you for the future. We continue to sit here in the heart and soul of our city. And so to have Michael and Neville here as well to receive honorary awards, we hope will also inspire you in line with the values of our city, values which we are celebrating particularly this week, also in the return of the specials to the city playing to 2,000 people a night for four nights. And if my voice sounds a little croaky, it's because that's where I was last night for a memorable occasion. But for those of you that have traveled here from other parts of the world that have not had an opportunity to experience our two-tone musical heritage, I'm very envious of you having the opportunity to listen to Neville uh, share with you uh, actually what is an incredibly poignant song um, from their own recent family history as they have uh, sought to work with those championing to bring an end to the tragedies of knife crime which have beset us both here and other parts of the UK. So welcome to this cathedral. For those of you who have traveled to Coventry for the first time, welcome to Coventry. We're delighted that you are now part of the forward story of this city and all that it stands for. And our prayer for you as a cathedral community is that you experience something of God's blessing as you spend time here today and that you go out from here as messengers of peace and hope for all. We trust that today will be an enjoyable occasion for you and we look forward to welcoming you again in the future. Just before the ceremony continues, a couple of housekeeping notices, if I may. Please, would you make sure that your mobile phones are switched off? I'm pleased to remind you that our policy in a building such as this is always one of forgiveness. However, you will find that those sitting on either side of you will probably give you some stern looks if you fail to observe that instruction. And we're not expecting any alarms today, but if so, if the alarms do go off, please would you follow the stewards uh, out of the exits, either at the rear of the cathedral through the glass doors or down through the steps to my right and to your left, which will lead you swiftly outside. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Before we start the formal ceremony, can I, on behalf of the university, thank the, de the dean and the cathedral for welcoming us here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
So, Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, graduates, on behalf of my faculty and the wider staff of Arden University, welcome to this graduation ceremony of Arden University in the summer of 2019 at this amazing place, Coventry Cathedral. Graduates, this is your day. I hope you feel great because we are here today to celebrate your success. So let me be the first of many to congratulate you. Well done. It's an immense privilege for me as uh, Vice Chancellor to address you in my first graduation ceremony for Arden University. Uh, you probably will know well that the university was granted degree awarding powers in 2014 and eventually granted the status of university by Her Majesty's Privy Council in 2015. Arden University is a pioneering new generation university. We really do challenge the status quo. The founding vision of our founding father back in 1990 was to create distance learning education that was more accessible so that people around the world could study courses and fit that study in around their busy work life commitments. We've stayed true to that original vision by offering through Arden University distance learning degree programs and also what we call blended learning programs where our students study at our centers in London, in Manchester and in Birmingham and also fittingly in Germany, in Berlin. We'll also be opening later next year two more centers in Liverpool and in Leeds. So the university story continues to grow and there are many more students who are studying with us from around the world. This is a great time to be part of Arden University. We now celebrate and organize ourselves in faculties, our schools of business and management, computing and IT, law and psychology. And we've in fact got some 8,000 learners. It's grown rapidly, particularly in the last two years. Over the next two, two, 12 months, we'll be doubling the number of full-time faculty that are teaching within the university. It's a remarkable fact of growth that we'll be able to attract so much talent. You are amongst our very first graduates, our first graduation ceremony last year, second this year. And we have decided as a university in our commitment to the world that we will plant a tree in conjunction with the National Trust for every new graduate from the university. So you can say that the hard work that each of you graduates has put in will lead to us helping to save the world, to save the planet, and each tree will capture something like a ton of carbon during its lifetime. So each graduate from Arden University is literally helping to save our planet. Although this is my first graduation ceremony with Arden University, it's not in fact the first university that I've led. So I've led another university, and I must have seen tens of thousands of graduates throughout my time. But actually what I've found over this 30-year history is that Arden's university graduates are particularly special. You are particularly amazing people. You are truly, truly amazing. Your success is even greater. It's even greater because not only have you tested yourselves against the hardest and complex, toughest subjects that universities can teach, but most of you have fitted this studying in around your busy, complex lives of work, family. It is truly amazing that you have carried on and been successful. You are truly amazing people. Congratulations. <clears throat> now, today seems like a very formal occasion. And of course, when you're in a, a grand cathedral like this, it does seem to be very formal. It's an important ceremony. There's no getting away from it. It's a transition 
from your current status to that of graduate of the university. By shaking hands with the chairman, as you will do, you move from this transition from this state of being what they called in medieval term, uh, terms an ordinary person to becoming a learned person. So you will enter the ranks of learned people. It's an important transition. You're no longer just an ordinary person. Now we want you to enjoy this day and we want to make sure that your family and friends that have traveled far also enjoy it. So Arden doesn't stand on these traditions that you've got to have this stiff upper lip and you're not allowed to celebrate. So I expect to see you all shouting, hooping, hollering, anything you like to celebrate the success of our graduates because they deserve your support. So don't hold back. Of course, we are in Britain, so we must have a little bit of decorum. But look, let, let me be the first. If you want to take photographs, that's, that's fine. I've brought my selfie stick. Um, <laughs> I'd like to be the first to get the complete uh, photograph of our graduates as they sit there waiting. So let me quickly do this and take a picture. So please smile, say cheese. <laughs> Technology. Technology, <laughs> yes, there we go. Oh, that's a fantastic picture. There we go. Brilliant. So I'll put that on my Twitter account, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, all that kind of stuff. Uh, feel free to do that, hashtag Arden University. Um, what I'd say to you graduates is this is your moment. Don't rush it, okay? Swagger. We want to see your swagger. We know that you're going to have fantastic high heels, ladies. We want to see those high heels. <laughs> Don't be rushing across. This is your moment in history. It's your moment it's your time. It's your special moment. So let's make this a party never to be forgotten. Hey. So graduates, I, I wanted on your behalf and my behalf to thank some special people. So let me quickly do that. I know amongst the audience we've got uh, people of all different ages, family, friends who've supported our graduates through uh, this particular trying time as they have studied their way to success. Now, I know graduates, you're saying to me, hang on, Carl, you're going too far here. It was me who had to sit through all those classes. I was the one who had to navigate the online library. I was the one who had to understand the rules on referencing. I was the one who submitted the assignments to turn it in and made sure everything was correct. Yes, of course you did. You're amazing people. You're highly successful. Congratulations. But being a supporter and a friend, somebody there to help you through all of this, that's a special skill too. And it's something that I've only sort of realized now that I'm a parent. And the story sort of goes a bit like this. Look, there's nothing I wouldn't do for my children. I'd take away any pain that they have to go through, any exams they have to revise for, all that difficult stuff. And it sort of starts as a, a colleague and a friend and a parent quite early on. You, you, you know, even are you playing the right music in the womb? You know, have you got the right food? Are they mixing with the right people? Are they going to the right school? Are they doing the right kind of work experience? There's this never ending decision tree and you often don't know as a supporter, as a family, whether or not you're making the right decisions. So what I'd say to all of our supporters here today, look, you're not personally graduating, but if you were, you'd be graduating with first class honors because you've done an amazing job supporting our graduates. So well done, every one of you. I only hope that I can come even part of the way of having made the right decisions for my children. To my faculty, to my academic faculty who are arranged behind us, who work like Trojans, I want to thank you for your dedication and your support because obviously without you, we couldn't get to this point. So my faculty members, and they really do work tremendously hard, but it's a labor of love because we are passionate about supporting our students. I wanted to say to the faculty, thank you for your incredible job, 
It's an amazing honor for me to be the chief academic officer of the university, the vice chancellor supporting the tremendous work you do. Thank you for supporting our students. <laughs> to, to my support teams, and uh, there are people who are the unsung heroes of the university, who toil with our systems and processes, who try to give the best at every opportunity, the support for our students as they uh, study and then eventually graduate. You are the heartbeat of the university, and I'd also like to give you uh, my thanks for the work, the crucial work in the overall student experience, and thank you for your dedication too. So thank you, everyone. <laughs> to the team supporting graduation, so there are some people that have been working incredibly hard from early in the morning and were here yesterday checking things and have been planning this for several months. I'd just like to say this is an amazing ceremony. Thank you so much. It's so important that we celebrate this special day for our graduates. You're the people that have made this uh, such an amazing experience. So thank you. Uh, Faye, are you here? Where are you? Faye at the back has led this ceremony and the management of it. Can I just pay a special thank you to you for your brilliant organization? Thank you, Faye. <laughs> now, Faye's not going to be very happy with me because I was supposed to address you from one of the pulpits. The truth is I don't know where my left from my right, especially when she tells me it's from the point of view of the audience, not myself. So it got too confusing, so I've just followed the the Dean's advice and, and addressed you from this podium. Today, we are incredibly honored to have two very special guests with us to celebrate your success. The university has the special power to award honorary doctorates, and we use this uh, sparingly. Our, our two honorary doctorates are uh, Dr. Neville Staple, AKA Dr. Rudeboy, And, and Dr. Michael Fuller. Each, we're so very grateful that they could be here today. They both represent the values of Arden University. They have both pioneered in their lives to become truly exceptional people in their fields. You'll hear from my senior academic team. They'll explain a bit more during the ceremony as to why we are honoring their work. Each of them, if I may be allowed to say, has been supported by remarkable people along their journey. It's important to have these people who support you in what you want to achieve. They've been able to achieve great things because of their team. So as Vice Chancellor, I'd just like to personally pay a tribute on behalf of the university, not just to our honorary doctorates, but to those people who have supported them along the way. Now, in Dr. Rudeboy's um, circumstances, it's sugary. Sugary staple is an amazing force of nature. Neville has suffered three strokes. He continues to be a prolific performer, and it's the support of his wife that drives him on. And it's pretty obvious to me as I've met them and uh, been interviewed on radio with them that his wife is such an important, crucial person to him and has kept him going. So let me say, Sugary, you've done an amazing job of supporting your husband. <clears throat> now to Michael, it struck me that two women have had an impact on his life. And I can, I can tell you this because I've read his autobiography. And he's quite a shy fellow, so um, he's probably going to be a little bit embarrassed about what I'm about to say. Uh, um, I mean, obviously, the person who's had an immense impact on his life, of course, is his wife, Helen, who is with him today and has supported him in his phenomenal career that you'll hear about. So first of all, let me say, Helen, amazing job. Thank you. But secondly, in Michael's autobiography, he tells the story of a person he describes as Auntie Margaret. 
And you really do need to read his autobiography. It's an amazing read. Auntie Margaret had this amazing impact on Michael as a child. Michael is a product of the Windrush generation, brought up in care for part of his, uh, his childhood. And Margaret, Margaret Hurst, died at the age of 32. She would probably have never have known, therefore, Michael, what you were about to become. The child who was described as social workers, uh, probably written off as being too intelligent for his own good. I think that she would be amazed today to see that you are here collecting your third honorary doctorate. I'm sure that somewhere she is around looking down on your achievements and reflecting that she did an amazing job bringing you up in care. So thank you both to Helen and to Margaret. So thank you to uh, the amazing supporters of our honorary graduates. Before this sounds too much like an Oscar ceremony, let me end my speech with a final thought. Graduates, you have an incredible gift. You have risen to the ranks of learned people. You have achieved this despite all obstacles that were put in your way. All doubters, all of those who were saying, oh, well, maybe you don't need to do this after all. It's not necessary to submit that assignment. You're incredible. So what is next in your new, unique life story? What is the next step that you will take? We live in this world of endless cynicism. It's all around us. You, you can't miss it. It's in every new story. Banks rigging the LIBOR rates, charities such as Oxfam being involved in historic abuse, the Football Association rigging where the World Cup should be played, cricket players taking bribes to throw results or tampering with the ball, car manufacturers cheating the emission targets. Never has it been more important for you not to give in to this kind of cynicism? Stay positive. Invariably, those who are successful in life are the ones who remain positive, who keep a calm head, who have that strong moral compass when all around them is giving in to cynicism. Always do the right thing, especially when nobody is looking. To quote one of the greatest British uh, people that ever lived, Winston Churchill, the pessimist sees difficulty at every opportunity. The optimist sees opportunity in every difficulty. I encourage you graduates, be optimistic, do great things. Thank you. So it's with immense pleasure that I now invite our chairman, Sir Tim Wilson, to take centre stage ready to meet our first graduates. I now also call upon the head of the School for Business and Management to present the first graduates. And I'm delighted to say that he knows his difference between left and right. Thank you. Also, generally, the school with the loudest supporters it should be noticed. Noticed. Timothy, sorry, for the Higher National Certificate in Business, Timothy Moranga. Chinedu Asondu. For the Higher National Diploma in Business Accounting, Safina Azar.
for the Higher National Diploma in Business Management, Catherine Huguet. Ben Oliver Munro. <clears throat> Michael Ross. Morris Whittington. For the Higher National Diploma in Computing and Systems Development and also the Best Performing Student, Matthew George. For the Higher National Diploma in Travel and Tourism Management, Nicola van der Vouder. For the Extended Diploma in Strategic Management and Leadership, Selma Gibbs de Riggs. For the Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Business Human Resource Management, Andrew Turnis Jackson. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Business, Freddie Morangi. Lucy Awube by Gaman. <laughs> Sharon Ludloco. Beata Grinczewska. <laughs> Monica Eva Klimaschik. Ashpreet Singh Sethi.
Marush Marishin Mursho. Abiodun Obiadi. Sarah Elizabeth Rodley. Yep, okay, fine. sorry. Yep, okay. Fumialu. Oh, sorry, one second. Do apologize, sorry. Jinabu Balde. <laughs> Laura Adelaide Bai. Jandira Isra Frismo Garcia. <laughs> Sefu Fundi. Deborah Elaine Grant. Fanmileo Ola Dejeo. Second time lucky, Sarah. Sarah Elizabeth Rodley. Shafal Islam Roni. (laughs) 
And the Best Performing Student Award goes to Catherine Rosemary Louise Sutcliffe. James Ian Williams. Rajivi Thev Araja. Zai Mbungu Tutu May Makengo. Sandra Walton. Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Business Tourism, Katagina Anna Yagosh. <laughs> Abel Chinwendu Wally. Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Business Marketing, Laura Benson. <laughs> Gayonte Miller. Bachelor of Arts with Honours in Healthcare Management, Eduardo Adagan Conchimino. <laughs> Ursula Barbara Zrodzowska. Calvin Petro France. <laughs> D. 
Diko Mahmoud Hassan. Kanchan Bista. <laughs> Hannah, you must really hate filling in forms. I'm going to have a go at your name here. Okay. Hannah Olawaseo Abidemi Ogunjanimi. Sydney Arthur Malloy. <laughs> Josephine Edward Ngoy. Lidi Lafuma Tindidi. <laughs> Oyatero Aduki Adiemi. Victoria Ajao Ono Kpeti. <laughs> Margaret Sissi Akechi. Janet Nancy Ama Serwa. <laughs> Kumba Conte. Elena Kotutu. Kotutu? Yes. <laughs> D. 
Desmond Echichoya of Kosovo. Rosaline Abiodun Jesu Bayodi. Ada. Iwoa. <laughs> Shireen John Baptiste. Madeline Mayundu Keteko. <laughs> Cheney Dorothy Massier. Sylvia Tumba Malumba, Malamba, sir. Chinya Lillian Nikem Okiri. Emily Olasola Ojodosa Unmu. Anthony Ophili. Aputa. <laughs> Timiladi Tewo Oshawoli.
Runke, Florence Shamidi. Grace Smith Ossitlu. Kumba Sonko. Gressa Tojaku. For the Postgraduate Diploma in Strategic Marketing, Claire Gillen. For the Master of Arts in Strategic Marketing, Sophie Bingham Powell. Alana Jane Williams. <laughs> For the Master of Business Administration, George Tembo. For the Master of Science in Project Management, Ashford Yeboa Botang. I think it's worth saying that my attempts at pronunciation are a true, attempt, a true um, testament to the diverse range of student backgrounds we have here. Students from all over the world, which I've had to struggle to learn to pronounce. So thank you for that, graduates. <laughs> and Chair, that concludes the graduates from the Business and Management School.
innovation, ownership, supporting others, and doing the right thing. These are the values that support everything we do and aim for here at Arden University. We pride ourselves on building these values into all aspects of university life at Arden, and everyone here today can attest to the fact that Arden's management, academic faculty, employees, <coughs> and students alike live and breathe these values every day. When we nominate and select our honorary doctorate recipients, we look for individuals that demonstrate and represent these values and Arden's mission as a university. And our first honorary doctorate recipient today does just that. He moved to England from Jamaica at the age of five, first to Rugby Warwickshire and later moving to Coventry, where he pioneered the two-tone music movement as a founding member of the iconic two-tone band, The Specials. He has kept this two-tone music phenomenon alive and kicking through the decades with several hit albums, top-selling autobiography, international touring with his bands, and a constant stream of new albums, videos, TV appearances, music writing, and producing. He has scores of musical awards, including Mojo, NME, Gold and Silver Discs, and a Lifetime Achievement Award from his home city of Coventry, where he is celebrated as one of Coventry's living legends and he continues to be a forerunner of the Scar movement, still thrilling audiences with his own excellent band, the Neville Staple Band, at venues and festival appearances worldwide. In September 2018, Neville had to speak out about the tragic and heartbreaking loss of his grandson who was stabbed to death at the age of just 21 outside a Coventry nightclub. To enable some good to come out of such tragic circumstances, he currently works with various support groups, including victim support, cadet forces, mind and music for the homeless, as well as schools and young offenders to broaden awareness of the implications of night crime through a variety of talks, performance workshops, music lessons and other fundraising activities, with devoted support from his wife, manager and soulmate Christine, who we're delighted to also welcome here today. He's also recently assisted the Law Mayor of Coventry to support Coventry in winning the City of Culture 2021 bid and is helping to drive positive change in all communities and to boost economic prosperity in the city. In short, he's a very, very busy man who is living our university values of innovation, ownership, supporting others and doing the right thing daily. So this year, in 2019, as he celebrates over 40 years in the music industry, in recognition of his musical innovation and for his dedication and hard work in supporting local communities and youth projects in Coventry, Arden University are delighted to present the award to the legendary frontman of the specials, Fun Boy 3 and Special Beat, the original Rude Boy, hereafter to be known as Dr. Rude Boy. So Chair, Vice-Chancellor, graduates, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I am delighted and honoured to be delivering the citation for the conferment of an honorary doctorate of music for Neville Staple. Know that. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, the original rude boy here. Um, this is such an honor for me to uh, be so grateful to get this award from um, Arden University. So, for you to choose me for this special occasion 
mean so much to me. They are great values, especially to ownership and to support others. What would be the point of having all this success in the world, but not showing your skill to support others? I was taken from my mother in Jamaica before I was six to come to the UK to have a better life with my father, who I didn't really know until I got here. I only seen one white person before that, and I'd never seen straight blonde hair. Uh, weaves and wigs were not a thing back then. And then I discovered snow. For the first time, I also discovered chin blades. My father was uh, very strict, and life at home was really tough. I kept myself busy with different opportunities that came my way. I wasn't the best in school, but always seemed to be popular. I think I just had a gift of the gap, to be honest with you. You have to try and use the skills and talents you have in life and to take opportunities you are given. My talents took me from dancing championship with Pete Waterman to become a popular sound system DJ and toasting entertainer. Unfortunately, I got myself in some trouble here and there on the street. It was a bad time for racial attacks. So he had to be assertive to, con to survive. But remember, life is about the decisions you make and how you create your own opportunities and destiny. I was at the Hollywood Youth Club right here in Coventry with my long-time long -time friend Trevor Evans chatting lyrics on our Jabadi sound system when I heard a mashup of reggae and punky sound in the next room. I got nosy and instantly became friends with Jerry Damers, the great man of two tone, the general, who said he got a lot of his inspiration from the brilliant Neil Davis. I went from helping with cable sound, sound mixing with the Coventry Automatics to become a front man of the specials, a front man and face the iconic two-tone movement, a movement that changed the world in many respects. Jerry and Neil always say they felt that I gave two-tone the energy and the real authentic Jamaican flavor it needed. To make it way more cool, I'll live with that. My singing, toasting and dancing then took me across the world, touring, working with so many different artists, great people, and various pop groups. From the specials to Fun Boy 3 Special Beat, a solo career in the US, helping bands like No Doubt, Rancid, to launch their career, writing soundtracks for film, plus helping UK artists like Johnny Z, Stereo Nation, and working with, with Lieutenant Pigeon, and many others that started career. I continue to share the stage all my knowledge with artists and still do. I have always shared everything I had, also worked with the new young talents to give them a leg up in the industry. This includes lots of uh, local artists, bands like Death of Guitar Pop, Duplex, and Julie Ashby, best friend of the late Amy Winehouse, who also shared stage with me. I also got involved in a lot of charity works and try always keeping back those things that's important to me. Again, I say it's good to share your knowledge, skills, and talents to support others. I have also used my profile to raise awareness about the current knife crime problems. My lovely daughter, Melanie, lost her son, and has, this has been a very difficult time for us. I have written some songs with my wife, Sugary, about this, and have raised money for charities while pleading for change, forward and help. Looking for those around you. Uh, please remember to be careful what you sign. If you write or create things for a living, try and have a good supportive people around you who you'll trust and who want the best for you. Never be jealous of others. <coughs> be great in your own right. Grab the good opportunities Always support others and don't let greed rule over. Be loyal to those who deserve it, especially yourselves. 
I would like to say a special thank you to everyone here, and in particular Carl Ligo and Arden University for choosing me. I am so grateful and so proud. You really don't know how much this award means to me. Thank you to my family and friends, my band and my acquaintances, especially Dr. Pogo Caesar, who has supported my career through thick and thin, Tony McHarr, who wrote my top selling book with me, Sukha Singh and the Two Tone Mu um, Museum for their brilliant exhibition of my life, and to Midnight Mango, Cleopatra Records, and all my other music agents for looking after my best interests. A huge congratulations today to all the graduates. Well done, everybody. And well done to Michael Fuller for being recognized too. And I have saved the best to last. I want to say that without my soulmate, my best friend, my manager, but more importantly, my wife, Christine Sugar Staple, none of this matters. This beautiful woman is my world. She has been there when I had it all and when I had nothing. She has saved my life twice in the past and nursed me back to health after my strokes. She manages my career, make her house a place of love and warmth. She writes with me, performs with me, and all of that, she does it for me and I do it for her. We love each other. Right. Some of you might understand what I'm going to say. Um, if not, I'll, I'll translate it anyway. Her uh, mother said, well, I never, <laughs> never, you know, I'm going to marry no good girl. All right, I'll explain that. Um, Sugar's mom says, never, you're never, you're never going to um, marry somebody good as um, Christine. So basically what she's saying, because of how I was, I was never going to find a nice lady, a nice wife to marry, and me find one. <laughs> you right? But hang on, she's going to tell her mother that she's married a rude boy, so what else can I say? So thanks, everybody, from the original rude boy, Neville Staple. Thank you. I'm going to look the part. I'm just going to do a little bit of thing for you. I found out uh, last night that this song is on Spider-Man. I didn't know until last night. It's on the uh, outro and the credits of Spider-Man, the new Spider-Man. And uh, I've got my members of my band, my wife, Drew, Sledge, Steve, we call him Sledge, but here we go. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do this one for you. It's one of my favorite songs. Uh, from the specials, and like I said, it's on uh, New Spider-Man. Message. Sing along if you know it. Yeah, if you do, don't, don't just don't sit around. Oh, me. You can, you can say if you know it, sing with us. Yeah. Yeah. Two. Stop your messing around. Ah. Better think of your future. Ah. This time is straightened right out. Breathing oh, oh, problems in town. Oh, 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 oh. Rudy, a message to you, Rudy. A message to you.
stop still fooling around. Ah, cause this time is straightened right out. Ah, better think of your future. Ah, Cause you wind up in jail. Whoa, ah, whoa, whoa, ah, Rudy. I miss you. Give it to them, give it to All right, this one is uh, it's called Simadan because of all the trouble that's happening with the youth and everybody. This one's called just Simadan. You'll understand it. <laughs> Simadan. You don't have to sit down. You can stand up and be a bit of a Yeah, here we go. Simmer down, you hit into hot so And me say you will get dropped now. Simmer down. Won't you hear what I say? Simmer down. Come on and simmer, simmer. Old time people used to say, What sweet nanny go, I go run in belly, come on. Control that temper. All oh, the battle will be hot, sir. And you won't get no supper. Oh, yay. Oh. Meton Doctor, no. <laughs> Temper. Down. Oh, the battle will be hotter. And you won't get no supper. Down. Whoa, whoa, yeah. Ow. A lot of mercy. Yeah. Right, what you said? 
Well, thank you very much, Dr. Rudeboy. Uh, we now carry on with the graduation ceremony. I might say, graduates, this is truly unique. You're never going to have a graduation ceremony like this one. So we now carry on. If I can invite uh, the chairman, Sir Tim Wilson, to take center stage. And I'll ask um, the head of school for computing and IT to reach the podium and introduce our graduates. Thank you. Chair, I now present the graduates from the Computing and IT School. Bachelor of Science with Honours in Computing and Best Performing Student, Maria Brianna Alexa Ronquillo. Master of Science in Data Analytics and Marketing, Sangeeta Dhanasekran. Ahmed Masood Alam Mufti. Sushil Kumar Ranada. Hassan Shokat Ali. <laughs> Master of Science in IT Security Management, Natalie Manning. Michael Oloche Ogbole. <laughs> that concludes the graduates from the Computing and IT School.
Chair, I now present a further graduate from the School of Business and Management with a Master of Science in Project Management, Abhishek Kumar Das Yadav. And now I'm pleased to present the graduates from the School of Psychology, Law and Social Science. The LLB with honours, Maria Bird. Michael Olalaken Odenlami. And the Best Performing Student Award goes to Richard Wing. And that concludes the graduates from the School of Psychology, Law and Social Science. In the year that Arjun University award the LLB to its first law graduates, it gives me great pleasure to welcome Michael Fuller. Michael is the former Chief Constable of Kent Police and Chief Inspector of the Crown Prosecution Service. He was the first black Chief Constable in the United Kingdom when he was appointed to lead the Kent Force in 2004. Michael was born to Jamaican immigrants in 1959. He joined the Metropolitan Police as a cadet at the age of 16 and rose through the ranks over three decades, working in both uniformed and CID roles. In his work as head of the Serious and Organised Crime Directorate, Michael set up and ran Operation Trident which successfully tackled black-on-black -black gun crime in London by forging strong links with communities. He also helped to set up the Racial and Violent Crime Task Force and wrote the action plan for the Metropolitan Police following the inquiry into the murder of Stephen Lawrence. At a time when many ethnic minority officers were leaving the police, Michael helped to set up and became the founding chair of the Black Police Association. This was to provide a social network and support to black and other ethnic minor minority officers, many of whom felt they were victims of discrimination and racism. As Chief Constable of Kent, Michael reduced crime, improved public satisfaction in the police, and increased representation of female and ethnic minority officers. After re retiring from the police in 2010, Michael was appointed as Her Majesty's Chief Inspector of the Crown Prosecution Service and Serious Fraud Office. In recognition of his contribution to policing, he was awarded the G2 Man of the Year in 2001. In 2004, he was awarded the Queen's Police Medal. Now, Michael's no stranger to the challenges faced by all graduates here today as we seek to further develop our skills, knowledge and understanding through education whilst juggling the demands of work and family. Michael gained several academic qualifications during his demanding police career, including both an MBA and a Master's in Law by distance learning. He qualified as a barrister whilst working long hours as a Chief Constable. Michael's outstanding work is the true embodiment of the values that we hold here at Arden. 
the integrity and drive to do the right thing without compromise. The ways in which we work together and support each other. The value that we place on innovation and new ways of thinking and being. And taking personal and collective ownership in the commitment to excel in what we do. The vision of the School of Psychology, Law and Social Science is to work together to instill an ethos of responsible citizenship, social justice, and a clear understanding of how learning can make a positive and tangible change for good. Michael, your career, your unflinching commitment to equality and justice leads our way in this endeavor. Chair, Vice-Chancellor, our graduates, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I am delighted and honored to be delivering the citation for the conferment of an honorary doctorate of law on Michael Fuller. Don't worry, I'm not going to sing. <laughs> I'm not going to dance either. <laughs> now, I'd, I'd like to give my sincere thanks to the faculty, students, graduates, and officers at Arden University for giving me this honorary award today. I also need to thank my wife, otherwise I'll have a miserable journey home. <laughs> She's stood by me through all I've been through, and I'll outline that in a minute. And my thanks also to, to Dr. Neville, Dr. Rudeboy, um, for the inspiration he provided to me in my student days. Um, and that was over 30 years ago. And they were, uh, the specials were seen as an anti-racism band and that um, they led the way in terms of music and fighting for racial justice. Now my story begins as an 18 month old baby. I was brought up in a care home and I was brought up in a care home until the age of 16 years. I was born of Jamaican parents. My parents had been part of the Windrush generation that had come to this country in the 50s. And when they, soon after they arrived, um, I was born, but their relationship broke up. And from the age of 18 months until 16 years old, I lived in two children's homes, um, one in Surrey and one in Sussex where I was brought up by a white foster mother called Auntie Margaret. Now, uh, during my childhood, I was passionate about solving puzzles, sleuthing, solving crimes. I loved police drama, and I used to sit and watch the police drama with Auntie Margaret. Now, sadly, she died uh, when I was 16 years old, and she died two hours after I'd had the chance to tell her that I'd been successful in my application to join the police cadets in the Metropolitan Police in London. And I know how proud she would have been and she would never have believed how far I would have got in the police. Because she was the only one to support my decision to join the police. At the time, and we're talking about the late 70s, there were huge amounts of racism in British society. And all my friends, relatives, school teachers said don't join the police, uh, you'll get a hard time and you'll experience lots of racism. Well, I did join the police, I did get a hard time, and I did experience lots of racism. And that's from certain cops and the public. It was such a big deal to see a black police officer at the time. There were about a handful in London, in the Metropolitan Police, but it was such a big deal. My first day on patrol, I literally stopped the traffic. Everybody stopped and stared. And there were very much mixed reactions some of, them, some of the reactions were white people who thought it was a great thing and came up and shook my hand. There were elder black people who came up and shook my hands. And there were young black youths, my age, who um, on the one hand were saying, it's very important that the police reflect the society it serves. But on the other hand, they were calling me a, a coconut and a traitor for having joined the police. Now, I've written about this experience in my book entitled Kill the Black One First, a memoir. Now, the title is quite shocking, designed to be shocking, but that was something that was shouted at me 
when I was on the front line in the Brixton riots as the only black cop amongst some 30 white cops. Uh, one of the rioters shouted that at me. Anyway, undeterred, I won, the, won a police cadet scholarship to go to Sussex University, where on completion of my studies, I was awarded a BA honors degree in social psychology. It was at Sussex I learned how to learn. I also found that learning could be rewarding and enjoyable. No, no really. <laughs> I climbed the career ladder within the Metropolitan Police, and certainly when I was mid-ranking as a detective chief inspector, I completed an MBA by distance learning, in my own time, my own expense. I also completed a wine exam, and the wine exam I couldn't complete by distance learning because you actually re were required to be present and actually taste the wine with others. I got very good at it. <laughs> now, life was very difficult in the Met at the time for black and Asian staff, and certainly at one point when I was mid-level, there were more black and Asian officers leaving than actually joining. And it was quite clear that if the wastage rate had continued, there would be no black or Asian staff left in an organization of 30,000 staff. So myself and another officer set up a support organization, and we called it the Black Police Association. I was the founding chair, which meant I took the risk of being kicked out of the organization, but it transpired that the commission of the day uh, supported what I was doing. And ultimately, the group, uh, was successful in stemming the outflow of black and Asian staff. I'm pleased to say that this year it celebrated its 25th year anniversary. I wasn't always successful in going up the ranks. I had setbacks and disappointments, but I was taught by Auntie Margaret to bounce back and never to wallow in self-pity, as this is so destructive. I continued up the ranks, tackling serious and organized crime and overseeing murder investigations throughout London. This included setting up and running a police operation in collaboration with community members called Operation Trident. And this was designed to tackle black-on-black -black gun crime. As with the current problem of knife crime, at the time when Trident was set up, so many young lives were needlessly lost. The reason for setting up this group, this, this operation, was little known. But the fact was that if you were black victim of violent crime at the time, that crime was less likely to be solved because of the poor relationship between the police and the black community. Ultimately, and it took four years, the initiative was very successful in dramatically reducing the problem. And as a result, I was promoted to a deputy assistant commissioner in the police, which is equivalent to a deputy chief constable outside of London. So that was a number two. At this point in my career, I, look I looked around the country and reconciled to myself the fact that there weren't any black chief constables, chiefs of police, anywhere in the UK. So I began part-time law studies with a view to retiring from the police and becoming a lawyer. As a requirement to be a lawyer at the time, I completed the law conversion course, that's the graduate diploma in law, part-time. But I'd also applied to become the chief constable in Kent. And this was having been told by my boss that I had absolutely no chance of getting the job. The selection is local, there were no black faces in Kent, and he said I was wasting everybody's time. Anyway, I ignored my boss's advice and applied for the chief constable job, and even cheekily asked him for a reference. My interview and three-day selection process for the job went well, and miraculously, I got the job and became Britain's first black chief constable in 2004. <laughs> Despite working full time in the highly demanding chief constable role, I continued my part time studies to complete the course to be qualified as a barrister. At the time, it was called the Bar Vocational Course. I enjoyed the course so much that I went on to complete a master's degree in legal practice. By this time, my wife wasn't smiling, but never mind. <laughs> I retired from the police, and after a competitive selection process, I was appointed as Her Majesty's Chief Inspector of the Crown Prosecution Service and Serious Fraud Office with a team of 40 staff, half of whom were lawyers. And what we did was we scrutinized the work of, of, of the prosecutors and these agencies in the way that Ofsted do with schools. 
And interestingly, I uncovered five miscarriages of justice where people have been wrongly convicted, they've been tried, they've been through the court system, they've been imprisoned, and the convictions were, were definitely wrongful convictions. I now run um, my own criminal justice consultancy. So what did I learn from all this experience? Firstly, that learning is a lifelong process, whether academic learning or learning about life, and it doesn't end at the graduation ceremony. I look back and realize all my studies opened doors and gave me opportunities that wouldn't otherwise have been open to me. I had an excellent return on my financial investment. Secondly, if you have a passion, as I did, about following a particular career path or doing something, it might be anything, just ignore the doubting Thomases or the Debbie Downers who say, don't do this, well, you can't do that. And they create those self-doubts that can hold us back. You must have faith in yourself and your abilities. Now, thank goodness I ignored the doubters. I, I, I say that almost every day. Thank goodness I ignored the doubters. I had a wonderful career, and I discovered there are so many wonderful opportunities out there. If only we open our eyes to them and follow our dreams. So finally, congratulations to you all, and well done. I wish you well in whatever you choose to do. Thank you. Thank you very much. I now call upon Ben Oliver Munro to give the address on behalf of the graduates. Mr. Chairman, Vice Chancellor, distinguished guests, ladies, gentlemen, and fellow graduates of the class of 2019, I'm honored and privileged to be stood here today with you to celebrate your success. We've all come a long way since we started with Arjun University. Each and every one of us should be proud, extremely proud. Some of you have traveled across the world to be here today, and that alone shows the importance of today. Graduates, I know you have benefited from your time at Arjun University, and I think that a graduation ceremony like this is a great climax to the end of an academic journey. For others, however, it is just the start. Let us embrace this spectacular and proud moment. To each and every one of you, well done. Now, the unwritten rule is that I give an anecdote relating to my experience at Arden University, but to be quite honest, I don't have just one, because there have been quite a few. <laughs> and I think the most memorable thing for me is seeing just how dedicated the staff behind me are. Academic staff, non-academic staff, and the, the student support team. As a student rep, I've worked alongside the student support team, and the work they do is phenomenal. Nothing is ever too much trouble, and that said, the same applies to all of the staff. Without them, none of us would be here today. My time at Arden University has been a continuous learning journey. If you asked me three years ago what gross domestic product was, or net present value, I'd give you a very blank look. The support from tutors, non-academic staff, and the flexibility offered by Arden University has meant that I've been able to learn things I never thought I'd learn in places I never would have imagined. I mean, how many people can say they've studied financial appraisals 35,000 35, feet in the air traveling to America? To reflect on my learning experience, it has taught me many things, not just business management or leadership, but it has taught me better time management, better self-discipline, given me better organizational skills, and most importantly, it has given me the confidence to carry on. The staff at Arden University have pushed me, all for good reasons, beyond limits I normally wouldn't be comfortable with. I've been pushed out of my comfort zone. I've got settled and then pushed again. This kind of stuff you can't get anywhere else. Of course, you can be pushed in your day job, but not like this. This is different. I'm a firm believer that everyone has the right to an education and that education should never rest on the ability of somebody to pay, but should rest on the ability of someone to learn. And at Arden University, they do just that. Arden University believe everywhere, everyone, everywhere has the right to a higher education. It's a path that leads to both personal progress and enrichment. And I can't argue with that, can you? The whole experience at Arden University has given me focus, vision, and determination to progress. My plan now is to progress through law school and qualify as a barrister. 
and I know some of you sat here today also are moving on, onto new courses, new careers, and more importantly, new dreams. Now, before I hand back, I've mixed it up a little bit and have saved this until last. We still have one massive thanks to give, and that thanks goes to the academic and non-academic staff who have all worked hard non-stop around the clock to help each and every one of us on our path at Arden University. Despite them sometimes setting work that may have felt like we've been kept under pressure, the fact that we are all here today is testament to their hard work and dedication, not just to education, but to us as students. So ladies, gentlemen and families, friends and graduates, please stand and give a round of applause to all of the staff at Arden University. So uh, we're almost finished. Um, we have a few awards just finally to give. Um, I now call upon the Arden University Heads of School to present the two Student Achiever Awards. I'm absolutely delighted to present the Oxford University Press Law Prize to Richard Wing. It gives me great pleasure to present the Chartered Institute of Marketing Award for Exceptional Achievement to Sophie Bingham Powell. So each year we make a Vice Chancellor's Award. Um, it goes to one of our graduates who's made an immense contribution to the life of the university. This year the award goes to the person who has completed their higher national diploma in business management, um, is carrying on with a BA business top up, who's just told you that he would like to become a barrister. We hope to be able to support him in that uh, uh, career choice. The Vice Chancellor's Award goes to Ben Oliver Munro. So I now call upon our chairman, Sir Tim Wilson, to formally close the ceremony. Dr. Staple, Dr. Fuller, Arden graduates, Vice Chancellor, staff of Arden, and our many guests from all four corners of the world today, thank you so much for attending our graduation ceremony in this magnificent setting in Coventry. Today's a special day. Today's a day that our graduates won't forget. It's a milestone in your life. It's a milestone you share. Many of you are sharing it with your parents, your family, your husband, your wife, your children, your partners. It's one of those moments where you think, I've achieved. I've made it. I've qualified. I've learned. I've worked hard. I deserve this. And so you do. And this special day will remain with you. As reflecting 
before I came and met these fantastic graduates, as I walked across the stage here, and I managed to spend a few seconds with each of them, hearing a little bit about their enjoyment, about their appreciation, about their journey. And they all have interesting journeys. Every student who's graduated today has their own interesting individual journey from aspiration to achievement. But you know, at times like this, I look back and I remember my own graduation ceremony. It was 10, 15, 20, 30, a few years ago. Okay, it was 49 years ago, actually. And I remember distinctly wanting to get out of the hall because this old grey-haired guy was closing the ceremony and droned on and on and on. And all I wanted to do was get out and have a party with my girlfriend and my friends. But I sat and listened because he said, I have three important things to say to you. And I thought, that's three minutes, it was 20 minutes. And I can't remember any of them. But that's maybe a function of 49 years. But I would like to say just a couple of suggestions you might want to reflect on. As the Vice Chancellor said so rightly, you've proven that you are learned people, educated people. You have learned not just the discipline that you've studied, not just the knowledge. You haven't just passed your examinations. You've learned a lot about yourself. So many of you in those brief seconds said it was hard work, but it was worth it. You've learned a lot about yourself, about self-discipline, about determination, about aspiration, about drive, about ambition, about resilience about stubbornness. But you've also learned more than that. You've learned about how the world can be viewed through the eyes of others. And that is such an important skill in today's complex society, our multi-global, multicultural society that we celebrate and enjoy. To be able to view the world through the eyes of somebody else is a skill that you will have developed, you will continue to develop, and is invaluable. Because unless you learn to try to view the world through somebody else's eyes, you will never be able to form this fantastic multicultural, multi-ethnic community that we deserve and we must develop. So I urge you to use those skills, to reflect on how other people view the world, how you view the world, and seek to understand other people in that context. And the second point I'd like to make to you, to encourage you, is to not follow the crowd. You're intelligent people. You have principles. You have values. You must remember it's okay to be different. It's okay to not go with the crowd. It's okay to address and challenge bigotry. It's okay to address inequality. It's okay to be unpopular when people are expounding awful views. Do not sit back and tolerate that. Engage. Use your intellect, use your education, use your understanding. Deliver and believe what is right. What is right with your principles, what is right with your beliefs, what is right in terms of justice, what is right in terms of your ethical and moral framework. You've got degree certificates and diplomas. They're evidence that you are an intelligent, educated person. But you're more than those certificates. You're a rounded person. Help other people become rounded people. Look after those 
who are less privileged than you, who are more disadvantaged than you. That's your duty as an educated person. I hope and trust that you'll be extremely proud to be associated with this exciting, different university. I'm immensely proud to be chair of this university, to have the privilege of meeting people like our two on docks today, people who walked across this stage, all of whom with their own journey, their own story. That's the privilege that I enjoy. I learn so much from you. Graduates, this grey-haired old guy has talked long enough. It's time to think about you going outside, having your party. But before I close formally, I'm going to ask everybody here to applaud our graduates for their work. We will be delighted if you could join us at our drinks reception taking place at the front entrance of the cathedral. But firstly, can I now ask you all to please stand for the departure of the academic procession followed by our graduates. Thank you. <laughs>